This is a podcast from the Nuffield Department of Medicine. Today we speak with Professor Derek Crook about tracking infections. Why do we need to track infections? Well, one of the characteristics of infection is it spreads either between people or from the environment or, or from, as it turns out, other animals. And knowing how it spreads is vitally important in being able to devise methods to interrupt that spread and therefore prevent infection. How can we use molecular technologies to track infections? That's really been strengthened through the technology developments, particularly those that have to do with generating the whole uh, genome sequence, which is the whole code, like a barcode, uh, of the microorganism. And that information can be used to construct the most detailed, very, very fine scale family trees. And from the family tree, you can look where the progeny have come from. And the progeny of the product or of the transmission chain, as it were. And from that, you can deconvolute, where you can find a way of expressing exactly how microorganisms are spreading remarkably accurately. Can you give us an example of when an infection was successfully tracked? There are a number of circumstances where this sort of tracking has been well done. But one stands out in particular, which is, is, is TB. This is an organism that infects man and is spread from person to person, uh, principally. And it is vital to understand who gave it to whom. And indeed, one person can give it to many other people. And we have really elegant examples from work that we've done ourselves and work that colleagues have done, uh, both in, in the UK and abroad, where you're able to identify this network of transmission and understand it very precisely, and indeed have identified ex post facto the donors. So you found the recipients, the people that got the infection, and you were able to then pinpoint the, per the person that was the donor. And interestingly enough, some of these family trees show that a donor is missing, and then you've been able to go and find the donor, which is sort of quite a remarkable way of taking network information, looking at it, understanding it, and know where parts of it are missing, and then through clever, what we call shoe leather epidemiology, going to talk to people and asking questions, identify the missing source. What are the most important lines of research that have developed in the past five or ten years? The research that we're doing now has benefited from a technology development, which means that you can get the whole genetic code through sequencing. And that enables you to have an extraordinarily detailed map of that code and comparing the maps of that code, you're able to identify these transmission chains that have practical use, but they also give us fundamental understanding about how microbes behave in general. And this has been a revolutionary advance in, in, in the whole field of infectious disease. Why does your research matter? Why should we put money into it? I like to think that is a, something easy to answer. Uh, and there are really two ways of looking at it. As, as, I've, as I've just said, we're getting a fundamental understanding of how germs spread. That can be used in practical ways. And therefore, you're able to do investigations that give you this detailed understanding of microorganisms. But you can then translate that into medical practice. The other part is that Actually, when you get the genetic code, you not, can't only use it to, 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 to understand how an organism transmits. There is a huge volume of data, and you can mine that code for other things. And the most useful thing in being able to treat people is that in that code, you can tell whether 
the germ is susceptible to antibiotics or resistant. And by knowing that it's resistant, you can avoid using drugs that are not going to be effective. Or if you know it's susceptible, you can use drugs that, that, that will work. And this genome sequencing is becoming so rapid now that you are likely to be able to take a sample and within the same day, and even in a few hours, provide that information that enables you to give very personalized or stratified treatment tailored to the particular problem to hand. How does your research fit into translational medicine within the department? Along with other activities that have to do with taking genome sequencing and purposefully putting it to medical diagnostic in, uh, use to better treat patients, it fits perfectly in that sort of applied translational sense with the activities of the department. Thank you very much.